Step 7. Tune the PID parameters using the simulated process object. From the previous step, we already verified the output of this function block. So this function block can run as a simulated process object. And then we connect the PID controller, the PID algorithm, connect the PID with this uh, function block. So the input of the PID will connect the output of this function block. And the PID output control signal will connect the input of this function block. So this second order unperiodic transfer function running as a function block will run as a digital twins with our actual process object and it will connect with our PID. It will serve for PID parameter tuning. So if we shift to the PID controller, uh, in the i7-1200 controller, it named PID underscore compact. And this is uh, the, the number one PID control loop. And this input will be connected to the output of that uh, simulated process object. And the output of this uh, PID controller will be connected uh, to here. That is the input of the process model. So that means currently we bypass the actual process object. We are using this uh, simulated process object as our process. So when we tuning the PID parameters of this controller, there will be a zero impact and a disturbance on our actual process object. And after you double check, you are using this uh, simulated process object, we can run the PID controller in auto and uh, tune the PID controller parameters. To tuning the PID controller, we would have uh, three ways. The first way, that is uh, using your experience to adjust the PID three parameters and watch the behavior of your process. For example, at the beginning, I'm using, uh, I manually changed my parameters. That again, that is a 10, TI 40, TD is a four. Uh, I changed the side point from 42 to 45. And after this, so we can see the right line, that is uh, the PID controller output and the green curve that is uh, the simulated process object output. And from this curve, we can see the system has an overshoot. As we know, if we increase the gain, uh, that will decrease the, the rising time of our process response. But if the gain is too high, that will cause the control output too sensitive. So like showing the screen, I change from 10 to 26. That will cause the system response very sensitive and not stable anymore. If we increase our integral in fact, so that means we will decrease our integral value. That is a TI. That can help the system uh, eliminate the steady state error. But if the TI is too small, that means the integral in fact is too strong, that will cause the system has a large overshoot like shown in the screen. The third parameter that is the derivative TD. So usually if we increase the TD, that will increase the, the response speed of the control signal. So that will decrease the overshoot and decrease the settling time. However, uh, if the control output is too sensitive or too proactive, so that will cause the unstable potential issue. So that's why this gain, TI and TD, they need to work together. So in my case, I will change this TI from 40 to 70, decrease the integration in fact, and increase the, the TD from four to six. After I change the TI from 40 to 60, and increase the derivative value TD from four to six, so as we can see the new set point, so the response shows good and the overshoot almost disappear. So that is the first method and that is our conventional method. Use our experience to adjust the gain TI and the TD three parameters. And because we could find millions of materials talking about how we can fine tune the P 
PID parameters, so I will not talk too deeply. Because in this video, our main topic that will be the method 2 and the method 3. The second method, that is a PID auto-tuning. So inside the TIA portal, it provides the trained and this a tuning mode, fine tuning mode. That allows this controller automatic fine tuning the PID parameters by itself. But meantime, your process system will be automatically controlled, like this way. Currently, the tuning status is showing in the process. The system will automatically give this a toggle control on the output. And in the meantime, our controlled system will give this a vibration. That's because the control signal we are toggle this a control signal. This toggle controlled by the system itself and uh, our system will give a response like this way. From here, it also explains why we are using the simulated process object at first. Because, so whatever this uh, control system controls your simulated process, it doesn't matter. This uh, simulated process just uh, give a response, and this response basically represents your actual process. And during this uh, fine tuning process, because this uh, system will automatically control this output, that means if your PID controller is currently connecting your actual process object, and your actual process will have this uh, oscillation here. But in actual world, most of the process doesn't allow you to do this. Because sometimes if you are controlling a uh, temperature or the pressure, maybe if your system do the oscillation like this, maybe your pipeline will break, or maybe your tank will totally leak. So it doesn't allow you to do this. But fortunately, we are using the simulated process object. We are using the function block. This feedback is just a data that will cause zero impact for your actual process. And this is a smooth way to fine tune our PID parameters. Because some cases, if you are using the PID controller connecting with your actual process, this fine-tune process would take uh, hours, a uh, very long time to finish its whole procedure, and eventually you will find its uh, fine-tuning process got to fail. The reason why it's got to fail is because the system response, because most of the process has a strong disturbance. So if the system has a strong disturbance, or the feedback uh, cannot give a stable feedback, so this fine tuning cannot get a successful results. So with this uh, simulated process, uh, it will smooth this uh, fine tune process because our main gain is to uh, get a uh, fine tuned parameters. We do need an uh, ideal condition and uh, less disturbance uh, environment. So using this uh, simulated process object will facilitate our PID fine tuning. So in my case, this is a one temperature process. The whole fine tuning process basically take uh, 10 minutes. So the system gives this uh, oscillation and uh, try to adjust the system and record the system behavior by itself. So during this uh, whole process, we can see the system toggle this uh, right curve that is uh, the PID output. That set point is a 45. We start from the 45. The temperature oscillate from 46 to 44. But if this is the actual process, so this amplitude may be a very high. Take care about this. So after this fine tuning finished, so the system status shows a system tuned it and uh, your process will go back to the side point. Meantime, your system is controlled by the PID. Once we shift to the PID parameters wheel, we can see those gain integral time and the derivative the action time, three PID parameters, they are automatically calculated by the system. Meantime, the PID controller in this i7-1200 controller, it also have those waiting parameters. Those parameters are also automatically calculated. Those parameters also play an important role on the PID control performance. 
So that's why personally I will prefer to use this uh, PID tuning automatic calculate the PID parameters. And uh, after this, you can use these parameters and using this uh, weighting parameters as an initial value based on your process performance and based on your production requirements, you can use this auto-tuned parameter as a reference and adjust them based on your case. It's much better than starting from the scratch. And after we implement those parameters into the controller, we can see the response from this simulated process. The PID performance shows pretty good. I also, based on the fine-tuned parameter, change a little bit based on my request. For example, the gain currently that is a 13, and the TI integral that is a 30, and the TD derivative that is a 8. All right, that is the second way. Use the automatic fine-tuning to tune the PID parameters. And the third method, we can use this Ziegler Nicholas tuning method. Basically, it would have two ways. So from this method, the first method, uh, it called the S-shape step input response. However, as we know, this tangent line is hard to find the accurate position. So the L and the T is hard to accurately find where they are. Therefore, based on this method, it's hard to accurately calculate the gain, uh, integral, and the derivative of parameters. So I will prefer to use the second method. Uh, we will start the gain k with a very small value. In the meantime, we will eliminate the integration and the derivative, uh, in fact. That means our ti integration parameter could be set as a very big value, and our td, that derivative value, could be set to zero. And after that, we will increase this uh, gain parameter till our process give us a static state oscillation occurs. And at that time, we will note down two parameters. One is uh, at that moment, what the value of that KP, another that is a PCR showing at the screen. And keep in mind that PCR unit, that is a second. We need to note down this uh, KCR and PCR two values. And after that, follow this uh, table, we can calculate what the actual PID parameters. Some friends will also ask, if my process object doesn't allow me to do this oscillation, how we can do that? That's why we are using the simulated process object. As my process as an example, firstly, I will eliminate the integral and the derivative in fact, and only adjust the gain, and gradually increase the gain till it got the oscillation showing as a screen. And at that time, I will record that time the gain parameter. At this moment, my gain value that is a 22. Then regarding the PCR, uh, I use this uh, tool to measure the time from T1 to T2. So from this calculation, that is a uh, 52 seconds. So as we can see, when the system is doing the oscillation, so that time our K that is a 22. And uh, the period from the T1 to T2, that is uh, 52 seconds. And using this table, using this table, Ziegler's Nicholas the second method, so we calculate the PID three parameters, that is uh, 13.2, 26, and uh, 6.5 on D. The value shown in the bracket, that is uh, the value calculated by PID auto-tuning. So we can see those two group parameters, they're almost the same. As we can see, uh, to find out this uh, PCR period value is uh, much easier than the first method. And especially if we use the simulated process object, we can uh, increase the, our gain value till your process got this uh, response. And that time we can record the gain and uh, the PCR value. And we can easier get the uh, uh, gain, this uh, estimator chart values, the PID3 parameters based on this chart. After we calculate the parameters, we can implement those PID3 parameters in our controller. And from this over picture, as we can see, from the two times uh, test, from this uh, side point increase and the decrease test, both of them, the overshoot, they are very small. And the rising time and the cycle time, 
they are acceptable. So that means those parameters are workable in our system. All right, that is uh, the third method using the Ziegler Nicholas tuning second method calculate the PID three parameters based on our simulated process object. All right, let's do a quick wrap up. So in this step, we use the simulated process object uh, controlled it by the PID controller. And I introduced the three methods we can calculate or tune the PID parameters. Until this step is just a rough tune or rough calculate the PID controller. And in next step, we need to fine tune the PID parameters. The basic method that is, uh, we will give a different uh, side point or evolve some disturbance to the system and watch the process value change and watch the PID controller's control signal behavior. And during those tests, we can fine tune our PID three parameters. But till now, it come up one question. If your process is a slow process, uh, even if we use the simulated process, it's uh, basically represent your actual process. If your actual process, that is a slow process. So every time you give a new set point, you have to wait the process uh, reach its uh, new steady state. So this waiting time could be uh, hours. Uh, it's uh, quite a waste of time. However, currently we are using the simulated process object and plus our PID controller they are all the logic, they are all the program. So let's come up with one question. Is there some way we can speed up the all the algorithm, all the logic, but without any hurt uh, when we shift our PID controller, go back to our actual process? The answer is yes. We can speed up our PID controller as well as our simulated process and uh, speed up all our fine tuning, the commissioning time. And all those PID parameters still available when this PID controller shift back to our actual process object. So in next video, I will show how can we speed up our PID controller as well as uh, this uh, simulated process to speed up all our commissioning process. See you in next video, step eight how to speed up the commissioning for the PID controller fine tuning. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe. See you in next video.